Hello everyone, Earl Henderson, Primordial Defense. Thank you for watching. I have another Monday quarterback video for you. I'm going to play this video and talk about things that are going on, to better explain what's going on, and uh, talk about things that I think that are being done right and or done wrong. Here we go. I'm Assistant Chief Wyatt Martin of the Houston Police Department. This critical incident briefing is intended to provide you with information about an officer-involved shooting that occurred in Houston on June 6, 2022. You're about to see video footage that is related to this incident. HPD conducts thorough investigations into officer-involved shootings. These typically require investigators to interview multiple witnesses, view numerous hours of video footage, and analyze a significant amount of forensic evidence. It is important to note that we are in the very early stages of the investigation and we continue to review additional evidence as it is collected and analyzed. The videos you're about to see can be graphic and may be difficult to watch. These videos may also contain strong language. Viewer discretion is advised. At approximately 2.42 a.m., two Houston police officers from the Southeast Patrol Division were on the scene of a family disturbance call when they heard gunshots nearby. One of the officers walked toward the street to investigate, heard more gunshots, and observed a white Ford Expedition driving eastbound on Idaho Street. The officer heard and observed active gunfire coming from the vehicle. The officer discharged his duty weapon toward the vehicle. The SUV began to drive away but stopped briefly down the street. Three more shots were heard from a distance before the vehicle left the scene. No officers were injured during this incident. Two days later, a person wanted for questioning in the incident turned himself into the police with an apparent gunshot wound. So as he said, they're there for some family disturbance at this place. D15. We're going to have around two shots, uh, two gunshots going off just to our uh, our east. Oh no! First things first. He's heard gunfire and he's going to go uh, investigate what the hell is going on. He is at his cruiser. Most likely, that vehicle has a rifle in it. So he is going to go investigate fucking gunfire with just a pistol. When he most likely has a rifle that he could have grabbed. Now, I don't know anything about Houston Police Department. Um, they may not even have rifles issued out to normal patrol guys. I kind of doubt it. Um, but that's possible. But if he did have a rifle in that car, then he is fucking wrong for not getting it out. That is my biggest complaint with these videos. Ro officers failing to get their rifles out when there's gunplay involved. If you're going to a gunfight, bring a rifle and bring your friends with rifles. Rifles are more accurate. They have a longer barrel. There are more points of contact on that rifle to stabilize the entire rifle to minimize as much movement as possible to help make it more accurate. Whereas a pistol has a very short barrel and there's only two points of contact. Your two hands, that's it. The littlest amount of movement in a pistol can throw your rounds way off. Just merely pulling the trigger if you don't have good grip. That round can go off to the side by a lot. At short distances, being off by a little bit, not that bad. But as you increase distances, it's very noticeable. You may not even hit the target. Lots of times police get in gunfights with just their pistols, and they completely miss the bad guys. The terminal ballistics are way better with a rifle. Far superior. The kinetic energy they dump into a target is just devastating. Rifles will rapidly incapacitate a threat better than a pistol. 
You use fewer rounds to do it, and it happens quicker. Rifles dominate. So he is wrong by going towards the sound of gunfire without taking a rifle with him. Instead, he goes at it with just a stupid fucking pistol. Fourteen D fifteen shots fired. Shots fired. It's gonna be a, a white Ford ex expedition going eastbound. Eastbound on Idaho. Eastbound on Idaho. You good? Yeah. You good? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. That's clear. White expedition still eastbound on Idaho. It's at the dead end. Going, going northbound. All right. So you hear him talking, but you don't hear any radio traffic. That's probably because he most likely has an earpiece in um, so that only he can hear radio traffic. Some cops do that. Uh, they like doing that so that the people they're talking to can't hear the radio traffic and, and won't be able to hear when dispatch says, oh, yeah, they got a warrant. Um, that way they can break it to them uh, when it's more favorable for them to do it. Um, and some do it because it helps them hear better. Um I like the idea of it, but um, in my experience, earpieces, for me, uh, I seem to produce a lot of earwax. Uh, and it could just be a normal amount of earwax. I don't know. But anytime I've ever had earpieces, uh, the little earpiece, the little hole that the sound comes out of just gets clogged with uh, earwax. And uh, it's never been comfortable for my ear canal. And they can get easily ripped out. And so I've just never been a big fan of the earpieces, but um, some people swear by them, but that's why you don't hear any radio traffic is he's got an earpiece in. Dude, he shot right here. So I came right here and I could see him had the gun. So okay, no, you're good, you're good. that's clear. We're good. Um, officers fired. So um, pay attention to the driver's side uh, window, or not the driver's side window, but uh, the driver's side of the vehicle. Um, pay attention to the top of that right there. You'll see muzzle flashes. Back that up. Um, you can see what looks like glass dust potentially uh, being created as rounds are hitting. From the officers rounds. Now if he had a rifle, so check this distance here. It's not that much of a, a, a great distance. You can still hit rounds on target with pistol. But that's about, well, maybe, you know, half a second back is about when he starts firing. And mind you, he's not within view yet. Uh, the distance on this, I don't know what it would be. But if he had a rifle, I am most confident that he would have been able to, for sure, put rounds on the target that he wanted to put on them. How many pistol rounds he fired, I, I don't know for sure. How many hit the vehicle, I don't know. Um, he could have fired eight rounds and only six hit the vehicle. You know, some could have missed and went that away. Of the ones that hit the vehicle, did they hit anybody in it? Uh, I can tell you that one person got a graze wound on their neck, but it's unclear whether he got that graze wound from the officer or the gunfight that they were involved with someone else because they said that someone else was shooting at them as well. Um, but the people in the vehicle, none of them seriously hurt or killed. So... His rounds were ineffective. He, they, they did not get the desired effect. But with rifle, 
very confident he would have it would have been a different outcome. So what his buddy was doing, back that up. So whatever his partner was doing, I don't know, but he shows up late to the game. Uh, he could have been, you know, with one of the people that was having the family disturbance. He could have been in the vehicle finishing up what he's doing. I don't know exactly where he was at, but um, I think that he should have at least gone without officers. He went to go investigate the gunfire. And maybe if he had been up there when this happened, uh, he could have been also shooting as well, and they could have increased their chance of hitting the target. talking about right there you see him shooting out boom you see it hit the windshield looks like it might hit the side window potentially right there for sure hit the side window So, uh, one thing I would have liked to have seen is that uh, after he fought um, and, and assessed, obviously the, the target went away, uh, I'd like to have seen him do a scan, search around, like what the fuck were they shooting at, right? Um, there could be, a, you know, someone else over there. Um, but for sure, definitely, definitely would have loved to have seen him do a top off. Um, you've already expended some rounds out of your magazine. Doesn't mean that car won't come back. It could come back, and if it does come back, would you rather have a fresh magazine in the gun or a partially depleted magazine in the gun? So when it's safe to do so, top your gun off. Even if you feel like you are confident that you only fired two rounds, still, go ahead, put a new fresh mag in that gun, and be done with it. That way you know for sure. If the fight starts again, you get to start that fight with the full magazine, not a partially depleted one. Um, if you're, even if you, like I said, even if you're confident that you think you fired two rounds, you may not even be sure that you fired two rounds. Uh, lots of people who've been in self-defense shootings have um, been asked how many rounds you fired, and a lot of times they get it wrong. They say, oh, I think I fired two or three rounds. And then in reality, they fired fucking seven rounds. Or they may say, I think I fired eight rounds. And then they only fired like four rounds or five rounds. Uh, some people get it accurate. Others, you know, they just don't. And this idea that you can count your rounds in a gunfight is complete bullshit. That's not happening. So even if you think that you fired two or three rounds, your brain could be playing tricks on you. Because you've gone through fight or flight, and there are some some things that happen to your brain that uh, cause you know distortion, and you may not remember things very accurately, even though it just right then happened. So you could be very inaccurate in your guess. Like I said, you could be thinking you only fired two rounds, but you really fired eight. So top that mag off when you can. And it looks like we're here at the end of the video. Uh, I'm going to read an article related to this story. <clears throat> so this was June 8th. So I'm, this is a few months old. Um, this incident occurred um, June 6th. And so uh, on June 8th is when this story comes out. 
the man who admits to driving the SUV involved in a shootout with police Monday morning turned himself in. On Wednesday afternoon, Kenneth Jolavate, 30, surrendered to Houston police with community activist Quanell X alongside of him. But Javalette insists police are wrong in saying he fired at police. He wants to make it crystal clear that he fired at no one, Quanell X said while escorting Jalavati to HPD headquarters on Travis Street. Jalavati said nothing as reporters fired questions about what happened that morning on Idaho Street. But Quanell says Jalavati did explain a different version of events to him. Jalavate says he was indeed driving the White Ford Expedition on Idaho Street at about 12.40 a.m. with a woman in the front passenger seat and a man in the back with a gun. Jalavate says, according to Quanell, before police showed up, another group fired at them first. I have the video that shows before HPD officer ever showed up, there was a lot of shooting going on between two separate groups, Quanell said. Quanell shared the video with ABC 13 and Houston Police, recorded by a witness on the street. You hear a couple shots, see a white expedition, then hear a dozen more shots. Police were called to the intersection off Cullen in southeast Houston after those shots were fired. Investigators say that's when the driver in the white expedition pointed a gun at an officer and the officer fired at him. The expedition took off. Then investigators say someone in the SUV shot at officers at least three times. Joe Lavate maintains he never pointed a gun. We asked Quanell if he's spoken with the man in the back seat who Joe Lavate claims had the gun. Quanell said he knew nothing about that person and didn't want to discuss it. <laughs> Police say Joe Lavate isn't a suspect, but they do want to talk to him first. He was taken to the hospital by ambulance. Joe Lavate says he was grazed by a bullet on his neck during the shootout, though it's unclear who shot him. When we asked HPD for an update on the investigation, a police spokesperson declined to comment. He says they'll release the next update if and when someone is charged in the case. Uh, yeah, so... Pff, fucking hood shit, right? <laughs> That's why it would have been so much better if he had a rifle. Something would have got done. Hmm. If you like what you hear and see, go ahead and give me a like and a share. If you have not already, hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for more Monday Quarterback videos. Earl Henderson, Primordial Defense, thank you for watching.